Hi everyone, this is Jim. Welcome to this Blitz Chess postmortem, a postmortem of my Blitz game number 377. Kicked off with uh, d4 here. My opponent plays knight f6, and we get into the Nimzo Indian defense after e6. I play knight to c3, which allows the Nimzo, and my opponent plays at bishop b4. And now uh, I went with knight f3 here, the third most popular choice. My normal move here is a e3, the Rubenstein variation, which is a bit out of favor at the moment at the top level. Everybody plays queen c2, the classical variation, but e3 is still very solid. Um, knight f3 is an interesting way to play. Uh, Kasparov used to play that way, so uh, uh, it's it's uh, pretty dynamic. Um, and uh, let's see, uh, just to show a couple lines. This is a new opening for me. I'm experimenting with it, so I want to look at some of the replies here. C5. I mean, d5, b6, and c5 seem to be the main replies. So after d5, I could play bishop to g5, putting pressure on the knight. Here, let's make that a better color. Yeah, bishop to g5, putting pressure on the knight, or c takes d5. So the idea with this is just to try and get counter pressure on the center immediately. Um, let's see, if black goes um, b6, then, well, once again, bishop g5 is an idea, or queen to b3. Okay. And um, if uh, the third choice here, c5, is another way of playing. And then here, just uh, g3 or e3. Yeah, I think e3 is, is pretty straightforward here, just defending the center since this pawn is attacking it. And you want to be able to take back with a pawn and maintain a, a pawn on d Four. It looks like that's a good idea. But it's interesting, you can also play uh, g3 here. Let's, let's take a look at this g3 line. g3, cd, knight takes d4. Oh, it looks like you transpose into kind of an English uh, English opening with the uh, bishop here and the knights here. Okay, um, interesting way to play. Let's go back to the game. I just wanted to look at that because this is, uh, as I said, a new opening for me. And uh, my opponent didn't play the most normal way. So he just took right away. It's not usually a good idea in the uh, Nemzo to take uh, until you're forced to take or prompted to take by some other move. You know, you want to force white to waste a move on a, something like e3. Or you could wait until white castles and then decide if you want the, to go ahead and do the exchange or uh, <clears throat> or just retreat the bishop back to e7, which is also a good square for the bishop. Um, taking here um, does damage my pawn structure, so... Um, it does accomplish something, but um, I don't know, leaves leaves light with an opening edge. And after h6, uh, the opening edge grows. That's kind of a passive move. So I start out uh, with a good position out of the opening, um, and I maintain this for a while here. Let's just go forward a few moves. Not a whole lot happening here. We're just uh, developing pretty normally, and uh, I'm struggling to get in. <laughs> planning, rather. <laughs> Struggling, maybe, is not the right word. Um, my plan is to get in the move e4. That's why I play bishop d3 and e4. And uh, black doesn't really have an easy way to stop that unless he wanted to play uh, d5. And he went with this d6 plan. So he's he's giving me the big center, and he's going to attack it later. And he starts undermining it with this move uh, e5. So we both kind of achieved our plans. I don't have to worry about the exchange here since I can take back with a pawn. It's all well supported, so just castle. And um, so here I'm, I'm doing pretty good up to this point. I make my first uh, slight mistake with this bishop a3 move. Just turns out uh, after my opponent plays rook to e8, I mean, there was a, a pin here, so I was threatening to grab a pawn. But uh, after the rook moves, this bishop just is not doing a whole lot here. Uh, maybe I had ideas of playing uh, c five at some point and undermining the center that way, but I never got around to it. He went uh sorry, he went rookie eight. I I didn't play C five right away. I and yeah the engine doesn't doesn't recommend that in any case. So just rook B one. Uh putting some pressure on the B pawn here. He plays B six, opening up a aisle for his bishop and rook E one. So I'm just getting all my pieces into play. The only thing I've really done wrong is to have this bishop on a slightly suspicious square there. Okay, bishop to b7. He's developing normally. Queen c2. Rook b8. d5. So at this point, um, maybe it's still not right ready. There's always a question when when to close off the center and when to keep it open. And the engine thinks I, I should just continue maneuvering a bit with my pieces. Knight d2, rook d1, g3. 
uh, different moves. G3 is interesting. It would keep keep control over this uh, F4 square, which he uh, has a plan of going after with knight h5, um, and that happens later in the game. So we'll see that. So g3 would prevent that. Knight d2, I'm not sure where the knight is going from d2, but maybe maybe uh, knight d2 to um, b3 is something that would help support a uh, pawn push. Anyway, um, I play the move d5, and uh, after that, now this bishop has really got no particular use. There's no no real tension over here in the center, so it's not contributing by putting pressure on the d6 pawn. That's well supported. So knight h5, and at this point I decide to bring the uh, bishop back to c1. So you can see that, that combination of moves, uh, bishop a3 and d5, kind of made this bishop useless, and I'm trying to find a use for it. Still, g3 would be a better way to react to this move. g3 just permanently, uh, not permanently, but uh, for the moment at least, keep the knight out of that f4 square, which is it's kind of an annoying piece in that square. Anyway, I went bishop c1. My opponent went to queen f6, and he's in no hurry to uh, hop in here and have his knight exchanged off. Um, so I went bishop d2, keeping my rooks connected. Knight c5, hitting my uh, bishop, and uh, I decided to keep it for a while. I'd retreat it back to f1, and uh, bishop to c8, bringing his bishop back into the game. So after my you know waste of time with my bishop going to a3 and back, uh, I've given up the opening advantage, and, and black has a slight edge. Um, but it's not overwhelming. I mean, we're still in the range of uh, plus or minus a few few hundreds few tenths, rather. Okay, so queen d1. Queen d1, then, is my first big mistake, where it gives, uh, gives uh, black a significant advantage. So instead of queen d1, I could play bishop to e3, bishop back to c1. <laughs> That's a funny move. <laughs> Rook to e3. Um, so other moves. Rook b to c1. Yeah, it looks like the engine doesn't really have a great plan here kind of stuck. So uh, anyway, queen d1, though, is not a good idea because it uh, just opens up. It's an invitation uh, for a pin here. Queen g4. Uh, bishop g4, rather, pinning would be a good move here. You see the engine spots this. And now the, the advantage shifts to uh, shifts to black. He plays knight f4, so not the most accurate way, um, but still keeping that significant edge. And also notice... Uh, at this point, he's uh, threatening to take my e-pawn, and I failed to defend it. Well, I kicked his queen, so his queen's not going to take the e-pawn. The queen is here, but it's, he's still threatening to take the e-pawn, so I, I really should defend that. And instead, I played um, bishop to g2. Um, I wanted to defend the pawn from over here. I guess uh, the problem is there's no good way to defend that pawn, right? Rook e3 is the recommended move here. Yeah, after rook e3, then I'm free to move my queen. Let, let's take a look at this. This is funny. Or I could play knight d2 and defend that way. Yeah, so I just neglected my e-pawn, played bishop g2, and he neglected to take it, although this uh, g5 move is also an advantage to black. So he's kept his advantage, but uh, he could have just grabbed the pawn there and been in pretty good shape. Okay, so there's some more maneuvering that goes on. I finally move my knight away. I'm thinking of playing f3 to chase his queen away. And uh, black keeps this pretty stable advantage, slight edge. So I haven't made any huge blunders here. I'm just uh, trying to maneuver my pieces around, get them a little more active, um, get lined up on the F file here. But that last rook move was a mistake. So let's see. Right here. Yeah, I should go ahead. You know, I'm trying to prepare F4 and try and bust through. And so that's why I played rook F1. It looks like I need to strike right here with F4. Okay, because after rook f1, uh, he can play f5, or uh, rook to f8 is another idea. Just put a rook on the f-file and push the f-pawn. And uh, my queen here is going to become a target. So let's see how this might go. If he played f5 here, the engine suggestion, I would probably take it. I'm trying to <coughs> uh, open up some lines here. Bishop takes, hitting my knight, but the knight's defended. Knight to a3. What is that? Maybe the knight's going to b5. But um, can I get away with playing f4 here? We should take c2. Queen takes c2. Oh, oh, 
yeah, I can't, I can't get away with this. <laughs> he is threatening to take the knight. Okay, that's why, that's why this is not, not so great. Yeah, so after bishop takes f5, he's threatening to take the knight. I have to move it. Knight to e1, say, bringing it closer to the queen side, and then, uh, then he has time to put a rook on the uh, h file, on the f file. Looks good for black. He's got a uh, uh, nice attack brewing on the f file here, and uh, this knight is well posted. I'll never be able to chase it away. So, uh, so that would be um, excellent for black. He didn't play f5. He played h5. So he's just attacking. Um, I get in my f4 break, f6 defending, and I get to exchange and open up the um, open up the um, f file, which is what I was planning all along. And so right here, uh, he needs to do something about it. To keep his advantage, he needs to take with the queen and keep the uh, f-file closed. He needs time to get a rook over here. After f takes g5, I have a winning move. And the funny thing is, I was thinking about this move in the game. Rook to f3, you know, just tripling on the, the f-file here. I can drop into uh, f7 here uh, with a check and cause a lot of trouble. I was worried about uh, knight takes e5 here. After rook e3, I didn't play this, knight e5 hitting my queen. But uh, what I forgot about or didn't calculate is uh, rook f7 check. Is, uh, is uh, you know, I don't have to worry about my queen. He's got to respond to the check. And uh, king g8, what's the best way to play it? Then bishop takes, so I, I trade off the uh, knight. And if the queen takes... Then uh, there's a mate in four after rook g7 check. <laughs> so let's see, the rook g7, king g7, queen f7 check, yeah. So this is a nice mating sequence. Rook g7 check, the king has no moves. He's forced to take the pawn. The queen can come in right to f7, forcing the king here. Only move, rook f6 check. Now the king has no moves at all. Uh, the only thing he can do is interpose the queen and checkmate. So, um, of course, he doesn't have to allow the mate... Um, but he can't. The point is, he can't really take on uh, e4 after uh, after I play rook f3. So that was my uh, one chance in the game. I had, was under pressure all that time, but I was planning for counterplay on the f file, and I reached that moment in the game where I had it, and I could have played rook f3 right there. And I I uh, saw this move, knight <clears throat> to e5, hitting my queen, and I I didn't like it all of a sudden, and I played rook e2, and now uh, that maintains black's advantage, even increases it. And the rest of the game is pretty routine. Uh, he just chases me around a bit, exchanges off some pieces. He's got domination of the F file here, so I opened up the F file and then gave it to my opponent. And uh, this move is another blunder. He's got, uh, after rookie one, I need to play rookie three. But you can see, uh, no matter what I play, I'm, I'm losing here anyway. But this allows the fork. And then after this exchange, there's a few more moves here. I was hoping to kind of trap his bishop over here. But um, he plays just queen f6, and uh, there there is no way for me to get to that bishop. And you can see the advantage is uh, five points in black's favor. So uh, I was low on time, too. So I either uh, resigned or ran out of time here, not finding a way to uh, take advantage of his somewhat, somewhat seemingly awkwardly placed uh, bishop. But there's no way I can get a piece in to, uh, to attack it. All the, all the uh, access routes to that piece are covered. Uh, I can't put a king here or here. If I could put my king on the h2 square and attack his bishop, then maybe <laughs> that would be something. Even then, he could escape to uh, he could escape to uh, f1 there. So there's no way out. Okay, so this is how the game ended. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed this postmortem. Leave any comments you have in the section below, and I will see you again soon. Bye.